Hi, this is T.H. Culhane for Solar Cities, and we are at the Kumbu Alpine Conservation Center where we are installing the highest altitude incinerator in the world. We'd like to thank David McNair and the Emerson Electronics Corporation, Incinerator Corporation, for providing us this gift for this experiment in high altitude biogas. There's a lot of lodges around here as the trekkers come from all over the world to make their way to Everest Base Camp and some to summit Mount Everest, the tallest mountain in the world. They pass by the Kumbu Alpine Conservation Center and they will learn through the information here that their food waste, which there is uh, an abundance of here because there's a lot of lodges in this trek, is now going to be turned into biogas so that we can preserve the soil binding shrub juniper that is the major part of the ecosystem here and prevent the uh, further use of fossil fuels like the kerosene and bottled gas that is brought up here at considerable expense just to cook meals. The idea is that there's enough trekkers, enough tourists coming through, and they'll learn that thanks to the incinerator, their food waste from every breakfast, lunch, and dinner that they have along the trail can be turned into clean, climate-friendly cooking fuel and heating fuel. So we thank Incinerator Corporation for this wonderful donation to this experiment in climate change mitigation and alpine conservation. And for the Guinness World Book of Records, this incinerator is being installed here at 4,400 meters. That's over 14,000 feet in altitude in the Himalayas here in Nepal, just in sight of Mount Everest. So this is a 1500 watt peak inverter putting out 750 watts and the incinerator is supposed to draw 380 watts so it really should it should work we're going to go ahead and press the switch go ahead see it did the same thing it tripped it yeah it's it's a overload yep i know It says overload when we do it. What is it saying? It's overload. Overload. That is so funny because huh, it's only supposed to draw 380 watts. And it starts and then it overloads it. So we are trying the Incinerator Evolution 200 with this solar array with this 1500 kVA inverter. It shows on the back that this is producing 750 watts and this is supposed to consume only 380 watts. But apparently with an induction motor, when the induction motor is starting, it has a large amperage draw while it's starting to spin and that seems to be overloading both this inverter and our inverter down at the Kumbu Alpine Conservation Center. As you will see here, when I press the button to turn it on, you'll hear the motor start, you'll see this thing jerk, and then it'll overload and it'll stop. I'm going to show you that right now. It started and then it says here, overload, <laughs> even though the batteries are fully charged. So apparently, even though this is, um, could be run off of this inverter once it was spinning, we can't get it to, uh, to actually engage so that it drops down to its normal consumption of 380 watts. This is the 1500 watt inverter. We have a 1000 watt inverter down at the KACC. The only thing is to keep trying it with different inverters of different sizes until we find what size inverter can accommodate the initial draw of the induction motor. So we're not giving up here. Uh, we just know now that even though the rated wattage on an incinerator 
is low enough for photovoltaic operation that we've got to have larger inverters for that initial kick. Ah, well that works. Mm. Okay. Look at that. Yep. We did it. It's working when it's plugged directly into the inverter. Uh huh. It's just the, the losses coming out of these thin wires. Yeah. <coughs> doesn't accommodate. Power loss. Yep. But obviously it's on. Good, so they have good charge here. And. Oh, now it tripped. Uh oh. All right, I'll Overload. Back. Overload. Yep. So here again. Now it overloads. That's an interesting result that when we plugged it in directly, it started, but when we use the switch, it doesn't. <coughs> so again, if I turn the machine on, and then I plug it in, ah, overload direct thing, but we got it to run for a few minutes once and the rest of the time it creates an overload. Okay, got a note here of the um, website. So we're trying it again. I plug it in directly, turn on the switch, and it goes off. We'll give it one more trial. With a direct plug, it did work without turning on the switch for some reason. I don't know why the switch or as opposed to just plugging it in. It's funny. But yeah, we'll have to use this. This is a full horsepower and there's a half horsepower. And I've run the half horsepower off of an inverter before because it draws half of the power. But it's such a shame. This is like the queen model. Yeah. Is there a different motor you could put into the uh, actual mechanics? Ah, but you are a mechanical engineer, you see? Who, who likes to think he's retired. <laughs> not, no, you're not. Let's see what happens when I plug this in. With the, with the switch on. So now we have success. The motor is running. It's the switch. It is the switch. <laughs> it's grinding food. You can see it's spinning in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what throws the food to the outside wall. That central plate spins and it throws the food to these grinding cheese grater like things. So what we're showing here is that <clears throat> once you get that motor spinning, obviously your standard inverter will work and the trick is getting the damn motor spinning. If we can get the motor spinning, we can grind food. But as Chris has pointed out, oh, what happened now? It just stopped. Look at that. It's on but it stopped. Oh, it smells like burning. Where's that coming from? We have a burning smell. Yeah. From this? So a little bit trouble in sides for connection. Mm. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, that's why otherwise it's powerful in what we have down here and here. It's normal. But that's not mm. supposed to happen because it's got a um, an overheat switch. Mm -hmm. mm, so we bring from long way, maybe some <coughs> Mistake. Some got damaged or something? Yeah. Wow. Should have been. Ooh, that's making it work. <laughs> yeah. Nothing on. Is it plugged in? No. You hear it like something is trying to happen. That's when it's trying to turn on. That's off, obviously. And that would be when it's on. Maybe it's a damaged incinerator. Now, it's, it's obvious that that's when I turn it on, <coughs> but <coughs> the thing isn't turning. Let me try something. Maybe it's gotten jammed for some reason. <coughs> Let me plug that.
dead end? It's drawing current. It's drawing a lot, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But it's not turning. Is it serviceable? Uh, in different countries, but not in Nepal. Okay. So we're looking at the insincorator that just blew a resistor. So the insincorator basically is a cheese grater right here that has a rotating um, rotating uh, plate that has these throw lugs that throws the food to the side so it can be ground up by this ring of uh, metal here and then it falls through and gets further chopped as it goes down into here and then the slurry comes out of here. We've had to disassemble this because we were trying to run this on a solar power array through an inverter and it blew both the inverter and the insincorator. <coughs> here we can see what actually blew. It's this particular resistor and if you can hold that for a second for me like this we see, oops, we see that if we set the if we set the meter to continuity, there is no resistance in that resistor. So this is the resistor that's gone. Uh, it's interesting that this resistor is connected to the overheating uh, circuit breaker, which apparently did not work, it didn't come out, and chose to blow this resistor before it created the uh, open circuit and saved the system. So this failed and then this failed and we saw smoke coming out. We can see how this wire goes down and is connected to this. So we think that the components that would need to be replaced would be this and this resistor, but it's better to just get a whole new board. Everything else looks okay. You can see that everything gets wired to this, what well, looks like a monster capacitor, isn't it? And uh, doesn't seem to be any damage there. And then you have the switch, the air switch, which is still working. And that's basically it. The rest of the machine is just a big induction motor. And it's just uh, an induction motor that spins like this. And uh, so there it is. And when we turn this over, you see how these throw lugs throw the food. So I think we can be pretty confident that there's nothing wrong with the motor itself. There doesn't seem to be any damage to the coils and no blackening on the inside here where the magnets are and the stator and the rotor. Unless it's... Is it catching? Hmm, it does seem to catch, doesn't it? Uh, the top of a bearing spot. <coughs> right, so that's what keeps it Should in be. line. Absolutely. Okay. Do you want the broken casing? Yeah. The uh, casing here, this was broken in transit somehow. And this piece here, also broken. But that doesn't explain the electrical problem that we're having. That's just the casing. And what else? Then there's just this great, uh, this uh, insulation. There's just this insulation here, which is for noise. And then the thing just mounts on here. So it's a fairly simple construction, a very elegant construction, now that we see it. <coughs> And we need to replace this circuit board. So, thanks for watching.